What's your birthday? Mine is October 3rd, 1925. So tell me a little bit about your mom and dad, Clark, you know. Uh, were they from here? They are from over around Ellington and Conewango. Mm -hmm. What do you do for a living? My dad was an uh, equipment operator, a farmer. He runs steam shovel. Mm -hmm. Uh, they built a seawall in the uh, 30s over in Dunkirk. Really? Uh, he went down in there with the crane and dug it out. Worked on the Fredonia Reservoir. Uh, just worked everywhere. I guess his family, they had a farm over on Buttermilk Road in Salt Dayton. That's where my dad grew up. How many children? Were there any siblings? Yeah, there's uh, four boys and one girl. Okay. I went to school in Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. I went to school in Shalott's, uh, uh Casadega, Shalott, Arkwright, and uh, Dunkirk. An industrial high school in Dunkirk. Then I went in the service. The one-room schoolhouse was the first one I went to was on Casadega and uh, Bard Road, mm -hmm. Griswold. Okay. There's a little one-room schoolhouse. That's where I went to school first. We lived down the road on Griswold. Yeah, we walked to school. And uh, I went to Wilby Schoolhouse in Arkwright. I went to several schools in Dunkirk. Number four, number six. And uh, being born in 1925, uh, 16 years later, night, December 7th, 1941, do you remember Pearl Harbor Day? December 7th, 1941. A day of infamy. Nearly 3,000 casualties added to the catastrophe. Within hours, the United States declared war. Everybody talked about it. It's about all you got. You didn't... Uh have too much media and newspaper come out long and work, went to work and uh, yeah, well, I worked for A. Sam and Son. Oh, sure. And I got pictures of that there. Yep. That was in 1940. Central Garage with deal at Willie's dealership and I worked for Pierce Motors in Fredonia. Uh, in the garage. That's about all I ever did is took, in the industrial high school, we took, uh, I took uh, <coughs> mechanics class. And me and my buddy decided to go and sign up, so we went to Jamestown and signed up. So you enlisted, and uh, what service did you enlist in? Navy. Why the Navy? The recruiter, he's the one that talked us into joining the CBs. Recruiter over there, he's telling me that, uh, gives me this book, and he says, uh, you're colorblind. You know, you open that book and you got to read the numbers in there. You got to go in the CBs instead of the Navy. That's how I got in the CBs to begin with. We went from here. Went to Buffalo, and when they took us on a train to Williamsburg, Virginia, boot camp at oh, Camp oh. Perry. Camp Perry, Virginia, Williamsburg. Okay, how long were you there? I was there, and I worked in, uh, I was in the 143rd, I think it was, 
uh, and I, they were having us there, and I worked at, in the garage in Camp Perry, uh, t uh, the base, um, doing the base uh, equipment, buses and shit like that. And I worked with a guy named Robinson, big old guy. He ran the front end machine and I worked with him. And then they formed uh, 133rd, they were forming, and then they put us in that. That's how I got in the 133rd. At Camp Perry? Yeah. I bought a Model A car from a guy in Virginia. I had that. And then I traded that to uh, a guy for a guitar. <laughs> what kind of car? Huh? What kind of car? Old 26, 20, it was a 29 or 30 Model A. I know we went on weekends up to Philadelphia, 72 hour passes. Yeah. Did you always behave? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. no need to You hear. couldn't do nothing, you, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't drink or anything because you were too young. Most places were 21. Yeah. California even, you couldn't get no, couldn't go and have a beer or nothing. From there we went to, it's in the book there. From there we went to Rhode Island, Endicott. Okay. And from there, the battalion was f trained all the ones on the East Coast took a 10-day leave. They give everybody that lived on the East Coast 10-day leave. Mm -hmm. And from there we went to Gulfport, Mississippi, I think. Oh, we went to California, Port Wainimi. I think we went from there to Port Wainimi. Uh, and they give everybody a 10-day leave there from California, from the West Coast. Ah. The people that were in the battalion from the West Coast, they got a 10-day leave. Well, from there we went to Hawaii. Okay. And we did projects in Hawaii, or projects in Hawaii. Uh, built some concert huts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you did the well, you did regular whatever they wanted you to do. Uh, where where were you in Hawaii? Were you at Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Yeah. Fort Fort Schaffner. Okay. No, that, that's where not where I was. That's where my I met my brother there in Fort Schaffner. He was in the army. Oh, you talk about that. How did that happen? I don't know. I must have written him letters, and uh, I knew where he was at. And when I got there, I went down there and see him. He's got, there's pictures of him in there. Yeah. Uh, so I got, I said, no, I went on Liberty, and I went over to Fort Schaffner from our base, and uh, the guard over there was a guy from Fredonia. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I says, is uh, my brother Floyd here? He said, I know right where he is. <laughs> so he took me over to where he was. That's how I got to meet him there. You probably hadn't seen him in a while, have you? Huh? You probably had not seen him in a while. <laughs> no, I hadn't seen him since he went in the Army. Hawaii, we went from Hawaii, we went to Maui over to Maui for uh, mm -hmm. boot, uh, we went over there for advanced training over on uh, Maui. Mm -hmm. We were there for, I think we went there for two weeks, a week or two weeks, advanced training, jungle training, out of this platoon run, go around at night and go, had to go and, mm -hmm. oh, they had other people that, uh, enemies out there and they were, we were supposed to capture them and uh, bivouac, you know. 
You just have blanks it. for your guns? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went on a boat. It was a troop ship. Okay. All I know is that we we played cards a lot and sailed a lot. And but your destination was Iwo Jima? Yeah. Did you stop at any other islands? Saipan and Tinian. Okay. I don't know why they stopped there, but it was all riddled from the war, yeah. from the battle. Uh, then we went on and then they they give us the paper. They after we left there, then they somewhere along the line they told us about this one. They give us the map of it and everything, and I can't find that damn map somewhere along here. The map for Iwo Jima. What beach we're going in? You're going on this boat, and you're going in here, and you're going. Uh, the other ones are going in there, and. Uh, Did they tell you what your assignment was going to be on Iwo Jima? Just going to do whatever the commander said. You, the battle was going, the battle, and then some of us went on the unloading LSTs with gasoline, and they, they were getting as much equipment ashore as like you can see on the beach where they've beached a lot of that stuff. And... Riddled it and then uh, went on for three or four days. We went on in the afternoon a D-Day. Oh my gosh! And we, but it was, but they, like you, like the, like it says, the Japs were dug in so bad that they weren't showing themselves. No way. They were. They said, "Don't fire." How did you get off? How did you physically get off the ship? Did you, did you get We off? had to go off with a full pack with a, a cargo deck down the side into Higgins boats. Okay. And, okay. They, and the Higgins boats took us to shore. You, drive, you climb down the cargo net and get into a Higgins boat. And then, so how far off the shore were you roughly? Do you remember? How, how well, it long? couldn't have been too far. Because I remember shrapnel landing on the ship deck. Well, we were well of it right in the morning. On the cargo boat, or on the transport boat. No. And you said when they come in, the coxswain didn't drop the, the ramp. They didn't on our boat. Do you, do you know why he didn't? I don't know why, no. They got the hell out of there. They were bombing too fast to my... Too much bombing going on. They want to put you ashore as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you think the ramp protected you some if it was up? They protected them. Protected the, the Navy guys running the boats. Huh? They were over here. You're up in the front. It must have been the quickest way or something. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All I know is we went over the side and got ashore as quick as we could and start digging, digging our, put that, she's soon a, digging foxholes. One of my first duties was, uh, uh, we're pinned down there for, you didn't do much anything for a few days. I can't remember the days, but uh, we were pinned down on just off the beach a ways, and you couldn't do nothing because they, they were oh, fired. They let everybody ashore. That's a bad part about that deal. They were dug in so bad that they didn't, uh, they didn't they, they, you couldn't see nobody. They were up there, and you're down here. Could you dig a, a, fo a foxhole in that volcanic eh? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, could you get it down deep enough, or to keep ca caving in? Well, that's another story. Me and my friend, or my buddy Menninger, were in the we dug the same one. We're in a foxhole. We're filling up the 
bags with uh, all kind of cash and piling them, building them up. There was a Japanese, grounded Japanese ship over here. A lot of our equipment over there. And we were in between and they had a, a ammunition dump there by that ship. And I think it was the second day, I don't know what day it was, second or third day, they put a bullet, uh, they put a shell in there and blowed that ammunition dump up and we were in foxholes by then and you couldn't do nothing. And uh, anyway, when the Japs landed a shell in our uh, ammunition dump, and all hell let loose. Shrapnel was flying everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And we were down, we were down, I don't know how many. I just filled a bag. I just filled a bag of, uh, for, and I was putting it up there and a piece of that shrapnel come down and it hit me right here in the leg. And I said, a leg like that. But you, there's so many guys there, things going, many people. So I, I didn't call, I didn't say, I didn't call over the medic. You know, it, I, it didn't hurt. It tore a hole, anyway, it tore a hole in that sandbag so that protected that, and Menninger took the damn thing and throwed it out. It was a hot piece of shrapnel from that ammunition dump. Did it, did it cut you? Huh? Did it cut you? I mean, did it break No, you? It, it hit my leg, but it didn't cut me because that sandbag, I just put that sucker up there and it cut a groove in that sandbag like that, and boom, that's all. But, uh, that's it. it was terrible. I don't know. And there was a lot of things went on. Was there how many guys to a foxhole? One? Me and Menninger were in the one, two of us. That was typical? Two guys in a foxhole? Yeah. You make it as big as that's what we we were two of us in that one. Were there any casualties among your CBs? Lots of casualties. Yeah. It's in the back. They're all in the book. You got them there. Yeah. yeah. In the book. Yeah. All the ones that are in the. There are pictures. Where's in that? Oh. It's 42. 42. Huh? There was 42 KIAs from your battalion. Was there time to mourn or grieve or anything or just keep going? Hmm. I guess it, I guess that uh, it turned out that they had a couple of them Japanese uh, guys in that ship with radios, and they were telling them right where to put them shells, mm. and that's how they landed, how they got that. So finally, they went went in there and got them out and. Oh, there was a lot of stuff. A couple of days later or whatever, we had to go on a LST unloading uh, fuel for our tanks and stuff. And that's the first assignment I had, work, work detail I had on that island, other than just, you know, regular war. There was nobody moving. The Marines were laying on the beach, blowed up like woodchucks, and uh, I don't know. That's about all I know about it. It's hard to remember. I've been 50 years trying to forget it. <laughs> and now you're making me <laughs> try to remember it. There's one thing I remember. It was about three days maybe two, three days after uh, we got on the island. Whenever they was secure enough, 
Uh, sometime along the way, they had uh, put up some barrels for for toilets along the beach, you know? No. <laughs> we had this colored guy who was one of the officers. Uh, uh, and we had guards out at night, guards out, and uh, he was down there leaving, uh, going to the John. And we had a, always had a night, uh, a code at night, you know, like password would be like tonight is Cotton or some name like that. This night. <laughs> It had to be Buick. It was Buick. That was the word password. If the guard stopped, called you, you had to tell him that you were, you know, Buick and you could go ahead. But uh, the old guy was on there. He wasn't an old guy, but he was on there. Yeah. The guy didn't say, he said, who goes, the guard say, who goes there? Old George didn't say nothing. He clicked the trigger. He clicked the gun hammer when he hit, put the hammer back on the in the guards. You know, don't shoot, boss. Don't shoot, boss. I was a Buick. I was <laughs> <laughs> <Eyes> the Buick. <laughs> we did a lot of stuff. We set up the blacktop plant. We set up the machine, and I worked with Menninger. I worked on that. Blacktop machine nights with Menninger. We had to change the trunnion, trunnion bearings and uh, keep the air compressors going and all kinds of work, just regular work to produce, to get that thing going, keep that going for... Uh, then you had the crusher crew and they made the stone down there and the crusher crew. Uh, for the airstrip, and did you ever hear of Tokyo Rose? Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> well, we're going there. She come on the radio. We listened to Tokyo Rose all the way from all. I remember how many days I don't remember, but it was quite a few days. We from uh, Hawaii to Iwo Jima. By the time we went down and stopped at Saipan, Tinian, up that way, and she say, "Yeah, boys, you're out here, and we're your your girlfriends, everything to break us down, morale down. You're here, and then they'd play Guy Lombardo music and." Uh, make you feel like holy Jesus somebody's running around with my girlfriend back home and try to break your morale down yeah Tokyo Road I see over on that end uh, President Bush his plane went down up on that end of the island and his plane went down and his partner got killed and he got saved and, and even uh, President Bush, uh, he said about, uh, on, even when he got to be president, he says, I've, you know, he said, it always bothered me. I felt real bad that my co-pilot or whatever, the guy in the plane with him, what he was a gunner or what he was, he said that he felt bad that he got killed and he did. And the CBs went over in the boat and picked him up out of the water and saved him, Bush. President Bush. So, There's so much shit you don't know. I've been 50 years trying to forget it. And Talk about foxhole religion. I mean, when you're down there, the shrapnel's coming, you actually get hit. Did, did you did you have any kind of religious moment? Like, were you... I don't know. I don't remember. All I know is yeah. that we got down and stayed down there and just keep out of... Sides, you couldn't see nothing. You couldn't see none of them. Where we were, I know that there was a, a big pillbox right up above us, and the Marine went in there with a flamethrower and 
stuck it in a window and you could hear the Japs yelling from being burned with that flamethrower. And this guy, I had the book up here. Uh, that old guy had it in a book and I can't find that damn book either. He's right from Buffalo. He's seven, he was uh, 18, 17 or 18 when he went in the service. And he had a big problem. They had a big write-up in the paper about him over here. That he, in the later years, he had a big problem over that, uh, you know, sure. over the episode or whatever you want to call what no, he... No, he was a Marine, not a CB, correct? Right. You, so you're sort of pinned down on the beach. Uh, at what point do you know it's clear to get out of the foxhole? I mean, is there sort of a general command? Does someone... Well, we had, uh, we had, uh, we had, you had everything. You had the warrant officers, police, you had the lieutenant, you had your uh, chief, uh, chief person that all give the orders. And uh, they say, you and you and you and you, you go on a boat and you're gonna, going on this detail unloading this ship or LST here. So we went there. Where Menninger went that time, I don't know. They probably chose him to go somewhere else and do something else. But I never thought much about it. It's just that you did what you were told to do, that's all. No. I had guys come in there that, I had an outfit from my outfit. He was in it, as soon as we hit the beach, he cracked up. Was, it, was there a lot of that trauma? I don't know how much was going on. I didn't run up and down the beach and look at them birds. I just looking out for Clark. <laughs> was your normalcy in a sense, or did you always constantly on alert about the Japanese? Oh yeah, they had they couldn't touch nothing. You couldn't even get on the beach there for I don't know how many days. I don't count the days. But you couldn't even get on the beach because the Marines that were shot or blowed up or shot up or whatever or killed, they were blowed up like woodchucks. Mm -hmm. And they had to go pick them up. They had the airplane come in there with the DDT because the flies were on them, on the, I don't know. The flies were out getting on the dead bodies. So you had quite a job with it. They got bulldozer after they could get it secured enough to do something. You can't do nothing until you can do something to protect your men as much as you can. I don't know. So after they got that, they got, a, got it secured after they got them birds out of that uh, ship there, that wrecked Japanese ship. After they got them off of there, them two guys, they found out the Marines went in and got them out of there. Well, then, you you know, and then they kind of took a bulldozer, got a bulldozer ashore. Couldn't move in that volcanic ash, got a bulldozer ashore. Got a machine ashore, you know, pushed out a trench, big trench with the bulldozer, and laid the, laid the Marines in there, and the CBs and Marines in there. Whatever, that's what you had to do. Marin, the South Pacific guns, the most of the guns they had uh, were issued uh, us. Were issued us and the Marines as uh, carbines. Mm -hmm. They were a small thirty caliber carbine, yep. uh, but then you had a few BARs, and you had machine guns. Issued carbines and not the Garand, the big M1. Well, they were because jungle, they had a lot of jungle fighting and they, you had to be close up. You couldn't, you know, in the jungle, you didn't, didn't like the uh, army in Germany. They had 410s, you know, the, the, you know, 410 rifles the army used. But the short carbine is a short rifle. Uh, as far as I remember, a 410 rifle would go at least a mile, mm -hmm. like they used in World War One and Two over in Germany. Mm -hmm. My friend uh, from uh, 
Massachusetts, he had a BAR. But a BAR was a tripod that was, uh, you had to put it on the ground like that, you know, sturdy, and you had a, you generally had a, a, a bullet man, would you? They were a little bigger, high, more high caliber. But the BAR was a good sized bullet you, for that, so he, he generally had a helper. My assignment was working on, I worked on the airstrip. Mm -hmm. I had a, a 10 wheeler in a army truck and I had gasoline and oil and I have to take and go up on the airstrip and fill up the bulldozers and, uh, and uh, stuff with gas and oil that they needed. So I come back, was coming back from doing my duty up there, and I come down, and this we had the road up there. I come down, <laughs> and there was two two Japs come out of the cave. So these trucks had a canvas top, and you're sitting up there with the steering wheel. <laughs> So I didn't know what to do, so I just stepped on the gas. I fast <laughs> went down there and got down to there where I couldn't let go of the steering wheel with loaded with everything. So I just kept on going. I got and they didn't they didn't shoot at me or nothing. But I went down there and I told the Marines and uh, they went up and got them out of there. Got them two guys. They're probably the only two, three, four, wasn't too many Japs left on that island. Well, were you able to get Japanese prisoners? We did. Yeah, we had them. Uh, there were some there. I remember um, uh, that little prison. There wasn't very few that I ever saw, but I did see a few of them up there after they captured them and they had this like a jail there. And I remember seeing them in there. From that job, I was ordered to go on the on the night shift for the blacktop plant. They had that set up by that time or whatever. And that's where I worked with Menninger. I worked with him all the time. Me and him worked there nights all the time and taking care of the plant after they shut it down from paving the airstrip, you know. We made the tar there, they melted, they had a tar pit there, they had a crew on the tar pit that bring the tar in on barrels and uh, melt it and, uh, and uh, for the liquid tar for the asphalt. It was a big operation. Asphalt? Yeah, asphalt. Okay. Well, they put the stone down they put the stone down and they down at the crusher they 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 drilled into the side of the island and made their own stone and uh, hauled it up and uh, spread it on the airstrip they had graders up there we had bulldozers and all that, anything to do shovels and cranes and was the that? Japanese were all, all mostly on the island that the, that, the, that the U.S. invaded. The other side of the island was cliffs, and it wasn't, okay. it wasn't feasible for mm -hmm. us to land on that side of the island. The one, and I show you the blue beach and the beaches there. That was more flat, you know what I mean? Like this, uh, yeah, where you could get people ashore. Had the other ones going up, uh, build the road up to, went up to Mount Sarabachi, and uh, then they should have showed you what they put the flag up there and that. And that was a big achievement, you know, we're winning. They had, a, they had it started, but, uh, we extended it and uh, made it large enough to land the B-29s. Okay. That's why they wanted that island. That little speck of an island, they wanted to land the B-29s 
so they could uh, make one trip to uh, bomb uh, Japan and back. Before, if you, if they went from Saipan, they had to, they had to carry these extra gas tanks. You know, a lot of people after the war had them around here. They, them gas tanks, and they have to drop the gas tank. And but from you, they could make the round trip. You say people around here had those gas tanks? Yeah. Really. You buy them, the guys made boats out of them and a lot of shit. They were like a boat. They they made a, a lot of people bought them after the war. Yeah. They had them around here. How how long were you on Iwo Jima? Till, till the fighting was over? F from day one until the war was over. Two million New Yorkers jammed Times Square. It's official, it's all over. It's total victory. All I know is there was a lot of dancing and going on and cheering and stuff. And I said, where are you going? Then they went on a few days later, went on to, we're breaking up the battalion. A lot of my buddies went to Japan. They sent me to Guam. From there I went to Guam and I was work, I was, working on Guam there for uh, the post office. Go there at 11 o'clock or 10 or 11 o'clock and get on my Jeep, uh, take my Jeep and go pick the lieutenant up with the mail and then we went around and delivered it to the outposts around on Guam. I drove all over the island and this I get back at the camp and they say, see you tomorrow, Clark. Go down to the beach and have fun. Swim, do whatever you want. <laughs> That's the way it went. Thinking, you know, you're one of the probably very few people who went in on D-Day on Iwo Jima and went to the very end and are here to talk about it. Yeah, well, I did. I was telling uh, him there that I raised uh, my, well, she was my girlfriend, but she sent me a, a bunch of watermelon seed from Lakeshore Seed Company. And I planted, we planted them behind uh, our camp and they grew up nice watermelon. And I never got a bite out of them. Them boys stole them on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we had a Japanese, we had a Japanese record there that oh, we, record. they got that going, the boys and. Uh, were, were you involved in getting it running? No. Okay. But I ran, I ran it. Did you? I ran it on some picking up stuff and once oh. in a while. No. All I know is that if I was on guard duty and uh, it's a lonely up there all, at night in a foxhole and on guard duty and you're 16, 18 years old, 19 years old. You let sit there looking up at the stars and wonder if you'll ever see all the United States again. <laughs> That's a lonely moment, a hard moment. Iwo Jima, then Guam, then where? I've come back on uh, aircraft wasp ship from Guam. On the wasp. Wasp? Yeah. yeah. Aircraft carrier. We went to Seattle, Washington. Okay. Uh, and we were stationed there for Seattle, Washington, and then they, they shipped us to across the country on a train. We went from there on a train to, I was stationed in, uh, uh, on Pier 51 in New York, and then, and then I was stationed in Flushing Barracks uh, in Brooklyn. And what was I doing in Brooklyn? Oh, I know, I was in charge of the Second uh, 
barracks upstairs barracks uh, so I had to make sure that everything was done everything was done cleaned up every everybody's bunk was made and every thing was cleaned up and uh, until the uh, lieutenant or whatever come in and inspected it about you had to have all that done by you had to see that all the sir all the sailors had to get everything done by 10 o'clock for inspection and after that was gone why well, they said you go, go whatever you want to go down to new york or till the next day then i had to be back there and uh, get the crew ready and get them to clean it all up and that's what I did, inspecting again. Time served for enough point, you had to have a point system. Then they sent me up to, uh, okay. that's where I got discharged okay. from. I was 46. You walk in the door and say, I'm back. Oh. My wife was working in uh, some place, and I went to up to see up to my mother-in-law's house, and uh, she called her to come home. She come home from work, and that there. So we got married in '46, and uh, I think it was '46, and we were married seventy, sixty, almost seventy years. Oh, congratulations! What did you do for a living? You come back, uh, were, were people... Was I, worked on, I worked on making, long story short, I worked on construction. I worked in a factory two weeks, I didn't like it. I worked in the shovel plant two weeks, I didn't like it. So I went back on construction and that's what I did all my life. <laughs> Bulldozers and cranes and trucks and well, you name it, cement mixing and cement mixer. <laughs> when, when you lost some of your colleagues, uh, did they have memorial services? Was there anything other than... Build a big cemetery, the Fort Marine Cemetery. They built a big cemetery and they laid them in there and uh, whoever had charge of <coughs> notifying their families and uh, I'm sure we had a lot of uh, bugle calls and uh, things. We built a church and everything, so we had a lot of things like that. But you open that book up and show. Tell me a little bit about some of the pictures there. This is me and my brother in Hawaii. This is some Fort Marine stamps. This is my wife. This is my father and mother. This here is. Uh, Clark in uh, Camp Lejeune, California. This is my brother, he was an MP. Really? In Hawaii. Uh, yeah. What was he in? The Army or the Marines? Army. Army. He went to Okinawa after. That's where it went, Okinawa. That was nasty, yeah. When they had that conflict over there. You see that church that we built. Yeah. Be in to know we built that so, uh, church in uh, Evo. Hey, that was nice. They must have tore it down. Oh, there's a lot of things that occurred that I can't, I can't remember. But it worked. We're here. We're here. And we made it. So I don't know. Some of them didn't make it, and some of them did. So that's the way it goes. They, you know, that you were part of World War II and the greatest generation. Do you have any reflections on it, on your quiet moments, kind of what it all meant to you? What, what, what did it mean to you to be part of the service? I guess at the time I thought I, I didn't, I wanted to get in the service and do whatever I had to do because I didn't want to have the Japs take us take our country over. I never <laughs> I never thought about it too much at the time 
<laughs> but after a, after uh, time and time again, I thought, what if them suckers ever put a, put a goddamn shell into that LST? Where the hell would Clark be <laughs> unloading that gasoline? <laughs> 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 In a different world.